like, well, it's funny you should ask. I've got a kind of a whole new program. I'm still pushing the vinyl figure. That's that did pretty good, but there's still um it's still more to sell, so I'm pushing that. And I'm just going forward with the regular bootleg agenda at the same time. I find it's uh the two things kind of serve each other. The newest thing I have is this guy. This is the new style of figure I'm gonna launch is the suck peg. Alright, I put this first one out, the Suck Lord Six. And I'm working on developing that and trying to uh get my mold making and casting technology uh more up to speed, try to eliminate the uh the need to call them bootlegs. Like the re one of the reasons why when I first started doing this mold making stuff is uh a lot of them didn't always come out of the mold in such good shape. You know, they would have like these little air holes in them, some bad, <clears throat> some seam line lines and stuff like that, and little little mistakes that just made them less than mint. So I, want, the reason why I called them bootlegs was to sort of explain why they look that way. And with these peg people, I'm trying to uh, make them look a little more tight, a little more tit as they say. So, um, that's that's kind of what I'm doing, trying to get better at making molds. I'm still going to do the regular three and three quarter style too. I have, this is the newest guy that's kind of, I already, I already made him available to the Micronauts dudes that I, that I, that I talked to. You can see he's kind of an a Croyer riff, but he's, this is the one that's going to come out like any minute now. He's sort of just a bash up of uh, Croyer one and a Croyer two from the old Migos, and he's got this new kind of paint I'm using, this metallic. I don't know if you can really tell, but it's like this really shiny Matchbox style metallic paint. So I'm doing that, and then there's going to be a whole bunch of uh, hand done color variations and accessory things with the vinyl toy as well and some new commercials on top of that. So, you know, business as usual. Like, you know, it's like the, you saw the commercial, the cape comes off, it's got a ball joint for a head, so it's like a lot more, a lot more posability, you know, all the joints move and everything like that. It has a turntable you can put on its back, accessories, the radio, you know, fuck, I'm just, just, ah, sorry, you know, he's, he moves, I mean, it's like, at least you can pick him up and do stuff with him, I was trying to go, go for that. Are there plans for any more characters in that line? Uh, not really, not at the moment, I mean, I, um, I did promise. I did promise on the back here all these other characters, but uh, I don't know. This is my first one, and I'll be honest with you, the financial risk of it, uh, you know, was a little unsettling. Like, you know, it cost me X amount of money to make, and I've only recouped Y amount, and there's a disparage there, and I don't know. It's like if this one doesn't out or it's like if I don't if I have too much trouble you know making making the money back then I don't know if I'm going to do another vinyl toy to be honest with you it's like I don't I don't know if it you know I don't know it depends it costs money so we'll see I don't know I find that a lot of the people that were big fans of the bootlegs didn't necessarily jump for the vinyl and vice versa so I'm not really sure I'm kind of happy doing the doing the bootlegs to be honest with you the, the results are so much more immediate and satisfying. Well, um, they're way different, obviously. I mean, the bootlegs are made one at a time by me personally, you know, and the vinyl is produced in a factory in China. So, like, I mean, they both start out with a model, which I put together myself, the bootlegs being cobbled together out of busted three and three quarter inch figures and the vinyl started out as a clay sculpey and then I made a mold of that and a casting of that. I further worked the castings, you know, adding some more detail 
shipped that off to Hong Kong, and then it was all emailing with the details, you know, change this, this cake's wrong, da da da, all the little farting around, and then it just shows up, and then you get what you get. You know, it's like they did a great job. I, I had three zero make it. But there were a few things, tiny little things that, you know, I would have done differently if I had my own hands on it. And something a little frustrating about that, at least with the bootlegs, it's like I'm, from beginning to end, uh, it's, it's, I'm handling the item. So, more control. And also I can pump them out so much faster. It's like the vinyl, it almost took an entire year from concept to product, where with the bootlegs I can have the finished thing ready to sell in three weeks if I really hustle. So I can just constantly fresh, refresh, and it's more satisfying, at least artistically, to crank shit out like that. We'll see. We'll see. I, a lot of people that follow what I do obviously came into it through the Star Wars portal. And, you know, that was kind of the goal in a way when I first started doing all this stuff. It's going on like 11 years since I put out my first Star Wars uh Breakbeats record, and people still, you know, still buy that from me. So I never really had any issues. It's like I'm not. You mean what do you mean by issues? Like people hating on it, or yeah, once in a while, but not really. Most people seem. I mean, I think for the most part, with a few exceptions, like a lot of the Star Wars derivative stuff I do is is not in making fun of Star Wars. It's very pro Star Wars, so mm -hmm. people tend to get it. And that's fine. And and also, probably would ask like legally, has there any been any problems with this? Mm -hmm. And the answer is no. Surprisingly, there hasn't been a word in like the last eleven years from anybody at Lucasfilm or anything saying, "Hey, why don't you not do that?" Zero. So I take that as you know, either they don't they don't care, they do know, somebody knows. And they just don't see it as any kind of threat to them. Because uh, most of the times when, when people do get cease and desist letters, it's because the thing that they're making is in more direct competition to an official product. And there is no Star Wars Breakbeats licensed version, so I guess they don't care. You can't, you can't legally make that record because you can't sample actors' voices, you can't sample the John Williams music. So they they can't make it. So probably, behind, you know, under the table, they just they let it go because it does fill some cultural need, you know. And it's, the numbers are little. They don't really they don't really care. They don't see. It, I don't think they consider it a threat. And that's you know that's cool. But I wouldn't. People always think this. I have this this this, this legend that George Lucas is trying to stop me and. And I'm not, you know, and I'm not giving up. And, you know, I, I wish I was that, you know, that much of a hero. But really, honestly, if it ever got down to it, you know, I, I'd settle. I'm not stupid, you know. It's like I don't need I don't need to invite some big, costly, legal battle. You know, I'm trying to get away from Star Wars anyway. It's very difficult, but I'm trying to wean that out of the work. I'm trying to move into more original territory. Try to make my own Star Wars. That's kind of the the goal. You're going to see in 2008 this sort of diminishing of Star Wars as, a, as an influence in the sun realm. It's not going to go away forever altogether, but it's not it's not going to be so forward. That's why that's why when I in my in my internet movies I called it original villains, you know, because I specifically wanted to do something original that I could own myself and eventually license. And you know. Oh, that's that guy that does the Star Wars stuff. Like, you know, there's a little bit more. There's a little bit more to it than that. 